Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. It's always really exciting when we have new objects, new donations that have come into the Society. Keith Moore gave me a call and said, I've got something new to show you, so that's what today's video is about. Who's the scientist in the spotlight, Keith? Dorothy Crowford Hodgkin. She's a big deal because she's the only UK born female Nobel Prize winner so far. I can prove she's a Nobel Prize winner because one of the objects that was already in the archive is her Nobel Prize certificate. Here it is. Would there have been am. received on the stage in Stockholm, no doubt. There it is. Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin, December 1964. Unfortunately, that's all in uh, Swedish, I'm guessing. How's your Swedish? Brady? My Swedish is not good, but I know she won it for her crystallography biochemical discoveries. That's right. Vitamin B12, I believe, was one of her big ones. B12, yeah, insulin, uh, penicillin, so these are really important things. It's interesting just to try and uh, conceptualise how people, how scientists figured out the structure of crystals and the structure of important molecules such as those ones. She was helping us completely understand exactly how right. they're structured, which is yeah. incredibly important. Yeah. Um, not, I, I notice we haven't got her medal, just the certificate. No, we, we don't have the medal, but uh, we're waiting for yours, Brady, of course. Okay, well, yeah. we do have something else she won, though. Again, this was already in the archive. This isn't one of our new ones. Indeed. Can I open it? Yep. This is, you see there, Order of Merit, one of the great prizes you can win here in the UK. And there is her OM, Order of Merit. That's right. Presumably this was presented to her at like Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. Yeah, there's a limited number of Order of Merit, so it's a very uh, elite group of people uh, across the arts and sciences. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a big thing to have. So the Order of Merit's not like, uh, I mean, this is beyond knighthoods and damehoods and That's right. all yep. that other stuff. This is like absolute, yep. like That's VIP. Top, top of the heap. But let's get to the new stuff, Keith. First of all, tell me how you've come to have some new stuff after all these years. She died in 1994, by the way. That's right. But of course, scientists have students uh, and, and people they worked with. Uh, they like to accumulate things because they, they uh, are impressed by their, their professors. They, they uh, really value the work they did. So one of our current fellows, uh, Judith Howard, uh, presented us with this material. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. She worked with Dorothy Hodgkin. Okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, she decided she wanted to present this to the Royal Society. Part of the collection are masses of photographs of Dorothy at all periods of her life. This though is rather special. This is a set of photographs by Ramsey and Muspratt, who are a firm of photographers in Oxford and Cambridge, both women. And these are classic 1930s images of Dorothy Hodgkin. And they're, they're absolutely lovely. Had you seen these before? Were these commonly known portraits? I've seen some of these reproduced before. That one is a, is a very famous one, as is that backlit one. The one I hadn't seen before is this one, which is Dorothy smiling. And that's my favourite picture of Dorothy Hodgkin. Yeah, they're not, the portraits are normally so... Sober, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah sober, that's Proper a good Proper scientists. But this one is, yeah, yeah she's fun. Ha she's having fun, though, I think, yeah. Lovely. What a lovely thing to have. You met her, didn't you, as an older woman? Yeah, 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 in the late 80s I, I met her. What was she like? Uh, she was uh, um, having, a, having a nap, uh, and I was called in as a first aider to make sure she was all right. Right. Uh, and uh, she woke up, she was very charming, and then she started grilling me about Russian X-ray crystallographers, a subject which I knew absolutely nothing at all, but she was very nice about it. Not the story I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> you woke her up, but yep. then you talked crystallography. We did, yeah. Okay, there we go. So we got the photos. What else mm -hmm. have we got here contributed? So we've got some of her research materials around the thing that she did, which is X-ray crystallography. And if you're going to do crystallography, what you need, first of all, is a crystal. So uh, we can see here's a little envelope addressed to Dorothy Hodgkin at the Chemical Crystallography Laboratories in Oxford, which is where she worked. And then we have some little test tubes. Wow. And you can see here oh, yeah. specimens. There's like sort of red crystals in there. Ah, like, that's right. And yeah, they're yeah. still like yeah. dusty and moving around. Indeed. Does yeah. it say on there what it is? It does. How's your chemical formulation? We'd better send off to Martin Polyakov for that. Yeah, one, we think. might need to do a bit of research yeah. into this one. But CN. That's not cyanide, is it? No. So these are, <laughs> for the most part, some of the molecules of vitamin B12 compounds. Okay. On this one, we can actually see this. So this is methyl cobalamin. Fantastic. 
This one's in... I presume because it's light sensitive, so let's not take it out. Good idea. Who knows what treasures await? You shine x-rays uh, through those crystals. They have to be big enough. And you get a diffraction pattern, something like this. So you take photographs uh, and you can see oh, yeah. just little dots there. Now, scientists measure the angles of diffraction here. And from that, they can work out something that looks like one of these guys. OK, so there's an actual diffraction pattern. We don't know what that's a diffraction pattern no, of. No, it's not marked on the back at all, no. I'm afraid. So uh, we're going to have to do a bit of detective work to figure out exactly what we're looking at here. And this is why archive cataloguing is such fun. You don't know what it is to begin with if it isn't marked, but you can work it out. And you learn a lot along the way. Have a look in the links below, and we'll put a picture of this diffraction pattern there. And if you recognize it, you can get in touch and tell us what it is. And this here is sort of the next step here. You call this a density map. Yes, yeah, an electron density map. What you're looking at is the position of atoms in a molecule. So the denser areas are where you would find something like that. But it's still quite two-dimensional, of course. On this particular one, you can see that there are these little sticks here, which they would have put in the appropriate holes, and trying to mark the relative positions of, of atoms in a molecule with that one, I think. So then you get this kind of arrangement where you get stacked models, so sheets of these density maps built up, built up. So again, they're trying to figure out in three dimensions what this molecule would look like. So we're not going to pick these up because they're quite delicate, but you can mm. get the idea just by looking at them that they all pile yeah. up on top of each other to give you yeah. a three-dimensional picture of what's going on in a yeah. molecule. Yeah. So they are actually numbered, these ones, so we will be able to figure out the, the, the correct order for them. You've got some serious homework to do here, Keith. Uh, yeah, we have got some serious homework to do, but this is, this is the fun bit of being an archivist. We've got more stuff here. Yeah, again, more, more mapping there. I like them because they're like little works of art, some of these things. And I think we have some later versions here. And we do know what these ones are. Wow, look at those. Pig insulin. And it's got a date, June 83. So on these ones, we can see exactly what the, the substances they're looking at. Pig insulin from 1983. I bet you didn't think you'd be seeing that today. Yeah, just to finish with, because we've got the serious scientific stuff here. But um, I like personal things as well to do with scientists. Who, who doesn't? And in one of the books uh, that we received with this donation, we found this. This is from Beckel's school, where Dee Crowfoot, Dorothy Crowfoot, was uh, taking examinations. So this is when she's a, a young girl at school. So Hodgkin's her married name, and she hasn't got That's that. That's right, of yeah. Uh, and this is the school certificate examinations. There. So this is her exam timetable from when she's a schoolgirl. Uh, and I just think it's uh, fantastic to have that, especially when you can show it to school children today and just say, do your exams, get a Nobel Prize eventually. Just a fun thing to have. Yeah, amazing, amazing. And what's this, Keith? It says autobiography on the uh, phone. Yeah, the, these are TypeScript versions of uh, Dorothy's autobiography, which is pretty interesting. So this is the scientist writing her own life story, and you can see some of the corrections going on in there. Yeah, notes being made. Do you know, was this book published or like? I don't think it was, but it's been used by subsequent scholars to, to write life stories of Dorothy. OK, perhaps not actually published as an autobiography, but still a useful resource. Very much uh, so. Oh, look, she's put a little note saying, Pretty picture here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put a picture here. <laughs> what an absolute bounty uh, the society has been given here. It, it is. It's really great. And it's fantastic to be able to show not just the personal life of a fellow, but their scientific life as well, and uh, the rewards they got as a result of their brilliance. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more stuff like it, We'll check out the links down in the description and all the usual places. And a special thanks to our Patreon supporters who make it possible to make objectivity. You can see some of their names on the screen at the moment. Patreon supporters also get access to some extra bits and pieces, little extra bits of video, pictures, close-ups, behind the scenes stuff, all those little extra treasures. So if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, check out the links down below as well. You were quite right to make your letter mathematical. I can understand that language better than any other.